When I'm making this video, it's the best time of the year, and that's the Steam Summer Sale. Steam has so many sales every year, but the Summer Sale is always the most anticipated one, and a lot of people's wallets always take a hit with how many great deals you can get. Hell, I've added a few great games to my Steam library thanks to the Summer Sale. But once the sale is over and all these games go back to their full price, what's the best bang for your buck on Steam? Well, there's a lot of great small indie games, but Vampire Survivors is one of the best deals I've found in terms of consistency, price, and that sweet dopamine when murdering everything so fast. Now, the gameplay speaks for itself, but I'll speak on it soon, but the game released into early access on December 17th, 2021, so I'm well aware I'm a bit late covering the game, but I don't care. I want to make a video on it. In the short time the game has been into early access, it's accumulated over 100,000 reviews, with the verdict being overwhelmingly positive, which lands it in the 41st spot of all time in terms of positive reviews on Steam, and it only has a little over 1,000 negative reviews. The game's ahead of it in terms of positive reviews are some of the greatest games of all time. Witcher 3, Portal 2, Gary's Mod. Really, it's in company of some of the greatest games, and that's not even the most impressive thing. If we look at the most highly rated games on Steam in terms of percentage-wise of positive reviews to negative reviews, Vampire Survivors ranks third of all time, just behind Portal 2 and People Playground. We all know Portal 2 is one of the greatest games of all time, and it's been out for 11 years. I don't know what People Playground is, but it's been released since 2019, which is still impressive for the amount of positive reviews it has but vampire survivors is truly one of the best games you can get on steam and it could go down as the highest rated game ever at this rate now those are just some fun little statistics but who's behind this little masterpiece of a game well, it's a game developer named Luca who goes by Punk, and according to his Twitter bio, he accidentally made Vampire Survivors. Luca has a website as well, showcasing all the games he's made or worked on with all the different coding languages he's used. I personally don't know code too well as I dropped out of community college for software development, but if you look under C Sharp and Unity, you can see what I assume are the bigger projects. And the first one, RPG Prototypes, has a very big Vampire Survivors feel in terms of graphics and characters. It's a turn-based RPG game and it looks pretty interesting to say the least. Overall, all these little games look like good fun and you can play desktop versions of the HTML5 games and you can see Vampire Survivors there. But did you know the game was originally released as an itch.io browser game for free in March of 2021? Yeah, Ponkle Games didn't have a vision for this and they definitely didn't plan on having it blow up the way it has. So what happened and why does everyone that play this game love it and get addicted? Well, just like a lot of industries, there was some good luck for sure, but the game is really something else. All you have to do is pick a character, pick a map, and try to survive for 30 minutes. The game has a numerous amount of characters, all with a different start and weapon, and all of them have different start and buffs or negatives. And then every map has different enemies that spawn, different bosses to kill, but all the main maps have the same goal of trying to survive for 30 minutes. Inside of a run, you kill enemies, and the enemies have a chance to drop XP. And every time you level up, you can choose a new weapon, secondary weapon, or upgrade a current weapon. The game has a wide variety of weapons and secondary weapons, and that's what's even more impressive, is that most of the weapons evolve if you have a certain secondary weapon. Probably sounds a little confusing, but I'll give you an example. Let's just say you have the Bible. You get it to level 8 or whatever the final level is on the weapon, and if you have the Spellbinder as one of your secondary weapons, you can evolve the Bible once you get a chest that drops from stronger enemies. The game has 15 different main items that evolve with one secondary item to become stronger, and then two main weapons that take two secondary items to evolve. Just a lot of different weapons that you can evolve and a lot of different choices to have. And really, that's what makes it so fun. Every run you start off, you have items in mind that you want to get, but really the RNG can make every run so different and every item having good value can really make you use your brain. And while you're fighting all these enemies and getting all that free dopamine, you gain gold. The gold is used outside of a run where you unlock upgrades to buff yourself for the start of every run. We all know I like roguelike games and this is where some rogue like aspects come in. You can buff damage taken, cooldowns, amount of XP gain. Hell, you can even buff the enemies if you want more of a challenge. Really, there's so many options to unlock with all this gold. And a fun thing is, you can reset all your buffs whenever you want and regain all the gold you spend. And then the gold also can be used to unlock characters once they become unlocked in a run, which is another crazy fun thing about the game. It's the different maps have different items that you need to run to, and they can unlock you new items or characters once you get them. The game has 24 different characters total, and then eight more hidden characters. Good job, Ponko Games. I love a Vampire Survivors. Really, this is a great game. The bullet hell aspect, it's just so addicting. The runs are pretty 
short as well in terms of a roguelike. They're 30 minutes total unless you are really good at the game. And the game is so easy to tell yourself just one more run. The Steam stats alone with reviews and ratings speak for the game. And for $2, you're easily getting your money's worth for the game. And hell, if you have Xbox Game Pass for PC, you can get the game for free. The game itself is constantly getting updates as well and adding more and more content. If you're a completionist who loves getting achievements, then this game is for you as it's constantly getting more. When it went into early access, it only had 23 achievements on Steam according to the early access info, and now it has 120 when recording this video. And me personally, I love this game. I can pick it up anytime and give it as much attention as I want, as the game is very easy to have on the side with the simple movement and gameplay. I always find myself just saying one more game and looking at all the unlockables and what can I unlock next. I have nothing but praise for this game and the developer. I now realize was in my Twitch chat once thanking me for playing his game as the name Ponkle was familiar. Really, a game like this that just accidentally gets made but has such huge success and it's just so simple. I love seeing it and I love supporting it. A lot of indie developers work so hard on their games and I can't imagine the feeling of having a game blow up like this. I would highly suggest this game to anyone but just be careful streaming it as it absolutely destroys your bitrate when you get into the end game. And thanks for watching this. As always, an extra shout out to all the great people who support me on Patreon. I love making videos on whatever I want when I can, but I'm just one guy. I'm doing as much as I can. But really, thanks for the support, and I'll see you next time.